going into about uh, who I am. So I'm Atta. Uh, I, uh, I'm Turkish and I'm Canadian and I come from an arts background. I love snowboarding. I love taking photos and I love eating sushi. And actually I was raised in a family of artists. So both my parents are actually watercolor artists. So that's their like full-time job. And my brother owns an animation studio. Uh, in general, I love experiment, experimenting and trying like lots of different new things and just going out there, seeing what's out there and just trying to figure out different things. Uh, in the past, I've explored a bunch of different mediums like photography, cinematography, graphic design, photo manipulations, you name it, anything that kind of has like an artistic element I've kind of tried uh, exploring. And in terms of experience, I've created over 100 prototypes and currently have three patents in progress. And last summer, I interned as an AR VR user experience engineer at Google. And this summer, I will be interning as an AR VR product design intern at Facebook. Uh, so I'll be working on the future of augmented reality there. So going next, here's some of the different examples of different projects that I've worked on. It's kind of laggy here, but uh, just a bunch of things in a bunch of different areas, just you know, trying out lots of different things. Uh, here's some of the different companies I've worked with in the past. And here's some of my achievements. Uh, so I studied uh, honors Bachelor of Game Design at Sheridan College in Toronto. Um, so first year was really hard for me. Like I didn't know any code, didn't have many friends, and wasn't really like happy with the work I did. I was super frustrated at myself. I always asked myself like, why couldn't I code like the others? Or like, why couldn't I draw as good as the others? And why couldn't I learn as fast? It was kind of like super frustrating time for me. Uh, so at that time, I was like, I was like trying to figure out what, what I should do. I, I was like thinking about like giving up. Should I like constantly like overwork or like let the stress like take over and just kind of give up? So instead, I, I started to like position myself in a different position. I stopped comparing myself to everyone else. And instead, I kind of focused on myself and I focused on just improving myself step by step. And a big thing that was kind of a turning point for me was I turned these boring projects, these boring school projects into projects I actually cared about. And I realized that when I cared about a project and I cared about what could happen from this project, uh, I did like way better work. And also at school, I focused more on my personal goals instead of exactly what uh, the school was trying to teach me. So I kind of determined my own measure of success, like what it meant for me to be successful and made sure that every action I did or everything I did kind of led up to my own goals. Uh, and one thing that was really important was in this, in this school environment, I had a, a bunch of peers, a bunch of, you know, upper years that I can talk to and get feedback. And that was something that I used. And I talked to all the upper years, constantly asked them for feedback, asked them what they were learning and took in that information. So that network was something that really helped me. And another big thing is, is nobody as good as you think they are. So, you know, a lot of these things that people have just like learned, or maybe they learned one specific thing that makes them look super good. Um, it's just like, you know, everybody's human and everybody gets to these like places like step by step. So don't let anything that you see like intimidate you at all. Uh, so my, after, like after all this, my first two years of school, I was like super motivated about creating interactive experiences, made a ton of games and I attended like a bunch of game jams. So as I started making more content and like talking to upper years, I started getting noticed and I was like super public about my work. I constantly shared it with people, constantly got feedback and tried to improve on everything that I got, uh, I got feedback on. And during this time I was approached by a fourth year student uh, to work on his capstone project. So this was his like final year thesis project. And this project was Bit Heroes Connect. So Bit Heroes Connect is a project that's in partnership with uh, York Regional Police and HP. Uh, it's a local multiplayer AR VR experience uh, for eight to 12 year olds in elementary schools. So basically the problem that York Regional Police had was um, uh, kids after 12 years of age start to get cold and like afraid of police officers because these police officers come into these rooms with like guns and uh, badges and different things like this full uniform saying like, hey, don't do like drugs or don't do these things. And it doesn't really connect with the students and it kind of puts a divide between them. Uh, so our, our thing was targeting right before they started getting cold with the police officers to make them have more natural interactions where they would have fun. So this was uh, done uh, using uh, this AR multiplayer game. So here's like a small video. Uh, it's kind of like a project overview video of different things we did. So it was made in Unity. We used uh, 
Magic of Voxel to do some modeling like really quickly. It's a really fun program. Um, and then here's like all the networking that had to get done. And then like the police officer had like a headset with like pass through. And this was kind of a game. It was kind of a very like simple, straightforward game uh, where there's these like bots around. It's kind of like Pokemon Go, but uh, a bit more like stylized and fitting the theme of the thing. So there's like bots around, you go around, collect them, different rarities and like you, <clears throat> you like tap on them to collect them. Um, but yeah, and then like, there's a bunch of like, like there's a bunch of game loops that go, oh, every time I click it, it skips. But there's a bunch of game loops that um, make sure that the officer and the, uh, the children's interactions are solid. So there's points where the, ch uh, like the children, like the elementary school kids need to go up to the officer and be like, hey, can you help me with this? So it creates those like moments of interaction uh, that build those bonds. So my contributions to this project was I was the ARVR UX engineer. I did a bunch of game design. I designed and de developed almost all the AR interactions and I did all the UI elements in this game. I also created like a green screen booth experience using like Twitter's API that automatically posted, uh, posted onto Twitter. People went into the, in front of the green screen and like dance and it posted on uh, Twitter. Uh, I developed an art style for our target demographic. So kind of figured out, okay, what do these kids like? Did some research trying to understand what would you know work with them what would get them excited uh and this project we presented and showcased at multiple events uh so the outcomes we were actually first place at digifest and uh so we were a social impact semi-finalist in the adobe awards 2018 and currently it's in the field for testing uh so my struggles during this project was code was way above my level like i had like i had no clue how to do the things i was asked um like some, like I would read the code that like the fourth year person wrote and I was like, I have no clue what this is, but, um, but I kind of had to accept that, you know, I didn't know in a, that I had to constantly, you know, get like feedback and ask questions and try to figure it out. So I spent a lot of like time really trying to read the code or understand what it was. And the most important thing here was maybe like not giving up or not getting frustrated or not, you know, trying to take the easy way out uh, and like recoding some of the things. Uh, so some of the biggest learnings I had during this project was designing for a cause uh, and also iterating with real users. So those two things specifically helped me learn a lot about the UX side of it. So thinking about what are we actually trying to achieve with this thing and taking in the feedback from real users and seeing if we're actually solving this problem. And also in this project, I started to understand how AR can make an impact and how the, you know, the technologies behind AR, uh, you know, like how, how does AR work and how we can use it in, in today. Uh, so during this time I was searching and applying for internships in the gaming space. So I was still thinking about like, you know, I wanted to go, I want to go into games. I want to work on like maybe AAA, maybe indie, like I want to work on some cool games. Uh, so I applied to 15 studios. I had no luck. So in this time I was in second year. So, it was kind of hard competing against all the third years and fourth years. Uh, and like most of these, uh, most of these people didn't even respond at all. Uh, so then I was approached by one of my teachers for a summer research project, like working with him at the school. And that's where uh, I worked on Game Designers Companion. So this was a straight up UI UX project. It was a gamified app that teaches game design process. So this was um, the project where I got more into understanding how UX works and going through a full like UX cycle, like brainstorming, breaking down the problem, understanding the users, uh, testing different prototypes and stuff and really iterating on them. Uh, so yeah, there was like a ton of iteration. It was painful at times cause it was, it was a lot of design that with like, with kind of like the games background, I would do a lot of like prototyping and a lot of like quick iteration testing and seeing what happens. But this, this one was more uh, straight up like UI UX and the prototypes couldn't be, we couldn't get like a game feel or really understand everything. So we had to really think about the design heavily. So it was like kind of a switch up for me. It was a really interesting experience. Uh, I learned that UX design is annoying at times, you know, having to think about solving some of these problems uh, in games sometimes, you know, if they have fun, they have fun, but uh, in UX design, you know, there's a lot of things that you need to make sure that it works. 
So, you know, you might design something, it might be fun, but it adds no value to your product. It's, um, you know, it just doesn't like fit the criteria that you need to fit it. So you're always constantly iterating in these kind of small box instead of being able to go fully like creative and go, go all out and just create like a fun experience. Uh, but I also realized that it was something that I could do. Like this wasn't something that was, you know, that I couldn't achieve or something that I couldn't learn more about or something that I couldn't continue developing. So I started thinking about my career and I realized that a career as a game designer, like no longer excited me. Uh, I realized I wanted to work in big tech, like Apple, Google, Facebook, Microsoft, and Amazon. So I, start, I started looking into like how my current skills could translate into maybe these roles in these big companies and AR VR seemed like the perfect opportunity for me. Uh, skills that translated from ga my, like my games experience to AR VR directly was the understanding of 3D space. So understanding how objects move in 3D, understanding uh, like the game UX side of it is like how people interact with objects in 3D. Uh, from the game UX side also like, you know, you also know like people's perception of things. Like if you, if they see a glowing thing or if you have like a narrow hallway, they're gonna wanna go down or stuff like that. Like you start to, uh, stuff from games that you can also apply to AR, VR. And also one part was designing for player emotion. That was also something uh, that translated because AR, VR kind of brings uh, the person a lot closer to the content. It makes it way more immersive. And that's, that's basically the same as like games. When you're playing games, you're not trying to do a task. Your full focus is on playing this game and you're directly connected to this experience. So both of the, those experiences kind of have a connection in terms of thinking about the player's emotion. Also throughout my games experience, I, I learned Unity and C Sharp. I also learned how to do like 3D modeling and how, you know, all those things work, like how meshes work, how, um, you know, how shaders work. So picking up on general like game development knowledge of understanding how the tech side of all this is achieved and what is possible with this tech. So some skills that I had to learn and improve were my visual design. So a lot more like 2D visual design and trying to figure out, you know, just doing a bunch of practices of like different UIs and understanding what communicates, how things are communicated. Uh, also thinking about UX design. So the full process, uh, just in general, like UX design, like brainstorming, product strategy, pitching, um, you know, there's like a, if, if you, you can search up like, um, like a course on UX design and you'll see all the different kind of categories that they break it down into. And for me, I had to pick up on a lot of these, a lot of these different things, but it wasn't a huge leap from games to UX design because it's the same core concept. You're designing an experience for a user. Um, and I also had to learn about the tech side of AR VR. So how does VR work? How does tracking work? How does it know where I am in this space? What does, how does computer vision work? How does, you know, all these small technicalities of how this tech actually works and knowing how this tech actually works allows you to create realistic use cases. So a lot of like the problems that some people have with creating uh, use cases is they don't truly understand some of the constraints that are in AR VR. Uh, but that's something that's really important when you're pitching. So at my time at Google, when I was like pitching different ideas, I would have to explain exactly how it would be implemented. So I would say first we use, you know, computer vision, this sends it to the server, this comes back, you know, there's a delay there. So we need to account for that delay or what happens if that fails. So you need to think about how this tech actually works to be able to design properly. Um, so how did I go about attaining these specific skills? I attended a bunch of hackathons. I did a ton of design jams, side projects, like research into, you know, what are these design skills, like how other people do these projects, uh, like reading case studies and stuff like that. So in general, just a ton of practice, just like constantly, you know, working towards my goal and constantly seeing, you know, what else I can learn or what else I haven't picked up on yet. Um, and during my th third year of school, I was super stressed about getting a summer internship. Like this was, you know, third year is, uh, like in that summer is like your internship. So you got to get something good or, you know, 
it's kind of it's like a stressful moment where you, you know you have to get a job uh and i knew like the only way i would make it was to like if i were to make it to like a big tech like for ar vr i would have to take the leap and make my portfolio resume and socials all super specialized to ar vr so everything would have to be directly tailored uh to uh to ar vr so this reduced my chances of getting like other internships because specializing in ar vr like if a game design role goes on my portfolio and it says like AR VR designer and then there's like some like AR VR use cases and then get like game design is lower they feel like this person is no longer like you know he's his job isn't a game designer anymore he's more of like an AR VR guy so I'm less likely to get any type of other positions so this was kind of a risk factor of like taking a full leap and just going all out and taking the risk and you know hope, hoping that it would work out I don't know if it was a good idea but I guess in the end uh, it worked out. Um, but to get an internship in general, I did three things. I networked, designed an effective website, and I created a strong resume. So for networking, my advice is be super casual. You never want to be super formal. Like everybody's like, we're all people, right? You can talk to them. We all have, you know, feelings. We all do stuff outside of work. And that's why it's more important to create friendly relationships versus like formal work relationships where I'm only contacting you so that you can help me get a job, which doesn't feel, you know, feel good to the people. Um, also like messaging on non-formal places helps as well. Like LinkedIn kind of has like, if you message on LinkedIn, it means that you're talking about some job thing. Like you're looking for some job, like some, like it, it has like some sort of like negative feeling attached to it, in my opinion, where you want something from that person. But if you message on Twitter or Instagram, it's kind of more of a casual, introduction or a casual talk and it's more friendly and in general some things uh to keep in mind is like people like talking about themselves so in these conversations uh you know don't talk so much about yourself talk about them and talk about you know who they are and get them to you know talk about themselves and express like what they've done or what they've achieved and what they like and different things and just you know just be friendly with them and also people like people that make them feel good. So in general, you know, people like to talk with people that, you know, that leave them happier, that make them feel good. Uh, it's just like a normal thing for all of us is like, if we're talking to someone, if we're friends with someone, we want to continue being friends with them or we want to continue talking to them if they make like us feel good. So this is kind of just a rule to keep in mind. Uh, so designing a website. So my advice for this is, so these are some of the iterations you see on the right. There's a lot more that I couldn't fit in here, but basically a ton of iteration and testing to see what's like the best and getting a ton of feedback. Uh, give me one second. I got to close this thing. I don't know if you guys can hear this, but I'm getting notifications. Okay, I'm back. Uh, so for my, my advice for this is um, just make your content easy to access. Like don't, don't have them to like jump through hoops to get to this content and also think about who's doing this and what they're looking for like if if you're saying this to, uh, if you're sending this to recruiters think about what they're trying to do like what are they trying to get out of your portfolio so if i'm sending it to a recruiter at google and they're hiring for ar vr ux engineer they're looking for like like coding experience uh some like ar vr prototypes whatever, like all this stuff. And the moment they land on the website, if you can prove to them that, you know, that you fit this role, then you're already like a step ahead of everybody else. So don't let, don't make the, uh, don't make these people jump through hoops to show, like, to be able to find out that, you know, you're a fit for this role. Um, a big thing is also social proof. Uh, so in the beginning, uh, like I showed all my awards that kind of gave social proof in, in, in terms of like, you know, here's like, I know what I'm talking about. So it kind of created some sort of, you know, for you guys, it created some sort of understanding that maybe I might know what I'm talking about. So that type of stuff is really important. So I'll go into a bit about like how you can create social proof in a little bit. But another big thing is case studies. So creating case studies on my website, you can actually go and look at some of the different case studies I've done. And at the bottom, there's folios and best folios. So these are websites where uh, people post their like, uh, portfolios, Kufolios is 
uh, is people that have interned at like all these big companies. So you can directly see like what were the portfolios that got into these companies. And if you, you can see kind of like a trend in them, like how they break down problems and how they explain their thoughts and explain their process. So looking at that and really taking in everything, like what others have done can really help you. Um, also just ton of iteration, like constantly ask people like, Oh, when you're going through this, like, you know, like when you're designing any type of thing is I like constantly ask people if like how they're feeling, what they're getting out of it. Like, what do you think when you get to this page, just formulate some like user testing questions and also use an analytics. So you can also see if a person went into certain pages or if they didn't go into certain pages, like are the people going onto your site reaching the places you want them to reach? So if I want them to see my about like hundred percent, I think that's like something that's like a big seller for me. I want to make sure that people are getting to about. And if I look at analytics and I see that they're not getting to about, maybe it's some, I need to change some sort of design. Uh, that, that type of thing applies with any type of product design is you want to, you know, figure out how you can get people to the experiences that you want them to have. Uh, so here's how I do social proof, for example. Um, on my website, here's my about page kind of showing, you know, hey, I'm at a, this is what I do, a small block about me. But more importantly, I have like my achievements, my speaking, like where I've like spoken, like how I've been on like public st stages talking to other people and companies that I've worked with. So these all kind of represent how, uh, you know, I'm not just some random person doing this thing at home, but I've been proven by these things uh, that make me who I am. So it automatically brings you up a level for the recruiters. Uh, and also if you, I can, I couldn't really add it into here, but if you go on my website and go to about page, you can see if you scroll down, you'll see a bunch of ink context photos. So I have photos of me, you know, speaking photos of me, designing photos of me doing different things. So this immediately, you know, shows them like, this is how I could be, you know, useful to you. Look, I do this work and here's me doing this work. So it may help them visualize what you're talking about. Uh, so creating a resume. So here's some of the different resumes that I went through and like designing and figuring out what works. Um, so you want to also do when you're doing a resume is like, try to talk to people from that company and see what they're hiring for. Like, what are they looking for and what is, you know, what, what do they want on their team? That way you can understand how you can create a resume that will directly target that. And also like classic advice, write the job keywords. Like if you're applying to something, go through that, you know, job listing and find like the specific keywords and put that into your resume. Uh, and also look at others like resumes and see how they've like done it, what they've, you know, how they've talked about things, what they put and like just in general, looking at others and finding references. Uh, and like, you can go more deep into how exactly to write some of your, you know, sentences in your resume, but in general, it's about showing like impact and your value. So if you have like, for example, you want, like, for example, at my time at Google, I created three patents. I presented to VPs and all these different things. So that shows how. I can be valuable to you. So someone else looking at this resume can be like, Oh, I see this and I see how this can add value to my company. So you want to help them create these type of connections. Um, yeah. And just use like strong wording and try to, you know, try to go through what you've accomplished and kind of hype them up a bit as well. Like try to, you know, play around with your wording. Um, uh, and in general, just iter iterate on it. Uh, so this is my current, uh, resume, you can find it on my website if you would like, and you can like read it and see like how I've, uh, you know, worded some of these things or what I've gone, what skills I've added and what tools I've added and stuff like that. So after all this, uh, I got a Google interview and I passed all of them. So this was, you know, third year I got my interview and then at Google, I had the most amazing time. Uh, I interned at Mountain View in California. It was amazing. San Francisco was amazing. <laughs> My manager was amazing. He was super awesome. Um, yeah. And 
like what I learned in total was you have to think about when you're designing, you have to think about the big picture. So maybe this is, this might be more specifically to uh, like how a rapid prototyper would work is you want to think about like the big picture. Like what is your team's goals? Like you're in a team, right? What are they trying to achieve? So this team is, you know, is talking to the head of design of Google AR VR. What does that person want? And what does the person above that want? Like what is everybody's motivations and how can you create something that adds value to them? So not just thinking about what you're making right now, but thinking about who the users of your prototype are. So think about like, who's going to take in this prototype and in general, just be transparent. Like if you don't know any, like if you don't know something, ask them, be curious. Like you start thinking about something and you're wondering how something works. Just constantly ask questions and, you know, uh, like people, people like explaining things as well. People like, um, helping others. People feel good about themselves when they start to help others and explain things to them. Um, so it's always like good to ask people questions. And if you're ever confused about something also promise small, but over delivered, this was like the first thing my boss said to me at Google. He's like, always promise small, but over deliver. Cause if you, if you promise big and like, even if you make something really amazing at the end, but you promise big, the value of that drops. But if you pro promise something small and you promise and show something bigger, then they're like, wow, I did not expect this. Like the value of it increases a lot. Uh, yeah. And like always evaluate how you're prototyping or what, if the time you're spending right now is on what matters. So constantly like every day evaluating on like, okay, I worked on this. Did this add to my team's goals? Did this add to what I'm trying to do or what I'm trying to pitch? Uh, and prototyping, like, yeah, think about who will try your prototype. Like who's the one using this and what are they thinking? Like, what are they trying to get out of this prototype? Uh, and like, while you're prototyping, you don't have to prototype every single part about it. Think about what you were pitching in the prototype. So if I'm pitching this really cool interaction where you can grab something from the screen and put it in your world, for example, maybe that's the part you need to focus on and maybe not some of the different like technicalities of like, oh, first you need to scan your ground or whatever, stuff like that. So kind of, you know, focusing on what you're trying to pitch. And yeah, constantly rescope and reassess what you're doing. Like earlier, just think about, you know, team's goals and stuff like that. So at the end, I got a Google full-time offer. However, I was placed on a web development team with no design responsibilities. And this was not something that, you know, that excited me at all. I had web uh, dev experience at all. And the way Google kind of works is they hire people that are like, that do basically everything that they can trust to learn something or pick up something when that they think be able to achieve it. They put people in like a lot of like random places, even if they don't, if their previous experiences don't directly fit there. Um, but yeah, uh, I started talking to Facebook then but they had no AR VR new grad full-time positions available. So they weren't hiring at all for full-time. Um, so I, instead I, inter I interviewed for an intern position just, just for like, you know, backup, just to see like, if I'm thinking about it, what would happen. So in the end I had a full-time offer from Google for a team that, you know, I wouldn't really be motivated to work on. And I had a Facebook intern offer for my dream team. So it was like working on the future of AR and, uh, in the end, I made the big leap of maybe going into this uncertainty of not knowing if I'm going to get a full-time offer, but I chose Facebook. So I will be interning at Facebook from my home right here uh, this summer because of <laughs> COVID-19. Uh, just get lots of feedback, be so, share, uh, make sure to work with people that motivate you. So people that if you're with people that are less motivated, you're not going to be as motivated yourself. So work with people also super motivated about what you're doing and just hype each other up and just like keep working and keep creating things and projects that you really care about and just spend a time, a lot of time iterating and like fixing things and just like taking it one step at a time and improving different designs. But yeah, that's pretty much it. So I'm open to answer any of your questions if you have any.